been leaving the city. I've been praying on some simple Midwest living homestead instead of my own nine to five with a suit and tie. Going off grid with Doug and Stacy. Going off grid with Doug and Stacy. Well, welcome back to the homestead. It is a beautiful day. It's like what we've been waiting for. I know spring is in the air. I've even been outside and uh, seen little pieces of green grass starting to grow. So I'm happy and the animals are out there and they're loving it. So I'm making tea for Doug and me and I'm making some milk for Storm and Norman. Making some chocolate tea. He likes to have his tea first. And I like to have my tea a little later. He's a two cupper and I'm a one cupper. I put mine in a thermal mug so it lasts me all day. And uh, I'm not putting any maple syrup in mine because he gets maple syrup. Oh, and I forgot to tell you guys, if you guys are making the chocolate tea, off grid with Doug and Stacy .com. We are back in stock with the chocolate tea, but a lot of people love it with coffee. We don't drink coffee here, but it is amazing with coffee. That's what people tell me. So if you are getting the tea, try it with the, the coffee because it is really good. And if you are going to use it with coffee, you just put a tablespoon or two in with your coffee grounds, just like you make regular coffee, and voila, you'll have chocolate coffee. Now let's get Norman. Because he is hungry. And you guys are going to be so surprised when you see the sheep, and especially Norman, because with the weather changing, so is their coat. Yeah, these are very precise measurements, but I'm really good at it because I've done it a lot. <laughs> I have a lot of experience. You know, they say you need to have like 10,000 hours for you to be good at something. Well, I got lots of hours feeding a lamb. All right, so that's done. I'll put it in the bottle. This is green stevia. And it is green, just like the plant. Okay, it doesn't have any bleaching agents or anything to it. This is natural green stevia. So I just would dry out my leaves, then I would crush them and turn them into a powder. So that's what I'm gonna use. And stevia, for some of you guys that don't know, is 200 times more sweet than sugar. So you don't really need a lot. A little goes a long way. So I'll put that in my tea. And just remember, when you are making tea, don't put the boiling water right on the tea because it makes it bitter. So just go ahead and just let it set out a few minutes and then it'll be ready to go. All right. Now, well, time for Norman. Let's go. Hey, darling. Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Darling, we could get out of town, see the beautiful world around, want to see it now. Pack our bags and get in that car, leave a little note and we'll drive real far. Let's get out, we can leave this city, let's drive to the ocean. Countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life I wanna make it count, honey Come on now and take my hand Hey, darling I love it when it's me and you On the road with a couple of tunes in a car for two Hey darling You know we're gonna have a really good time Driving in the middle of the night when the stars are bright Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Come 
countryside is so pretty with the wind blowing in your hair. We can look back someday, baby. Don't you understand that we only get one life? I wanna make it count, honey. Come on now and take my hand. Get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life on one And I think it's so cool when they start to lose, since these are hair sheep, you literally can just pull, look at that, it just comes right off. This is their winter coat that they had. And comes right off, getting ready for spring, giving them their nice smooth coat to keep them cool for summer. <laughs> My grandson loves to take this and he likes to make it a ball and he makes things with it. So I have lots of this in the house too. I'm probably gonna give them about half this bottle and then I'm gonna go give them some water. And it's like countdown. I usually bottle feed them until they're about three months old. So he's a, two weeks or two months, a little over two months old. So I got a little few more weeks. All right, time for some water and we'll get some a little later. And the reason why I do that with them, lamb is because they drink it so quick, they, can, they get bloated. So when I do it this way, I never have any problems. So I just generally works well for me. And this water is brought to you by our gravity fed water system that we have in the barn. And we didn't have any problems at all going through the winter and it's rainwater. Oh, you're hungry. So I'll give you some more. I'll finish up with Norman, give the horses a little hay, and then we're going to go down today and work on Mom's log cabin. While I'm filling up Doug's water, he's down at the log cabin now. And in case you guys are new around here, Doug and I, our mom is moving from the city out to the country and we're building her a log cabin. So what I'm gonna do is take this down to him and we're gonna get to work. But I wanted to show you guys over here my sweet potatoes because a couple weeks ago, um, I had went ahead and got my sweet potatoes started to make the slips. So I wanted to show you the progress of them. All of my sweet potatoes here, they all have roots. They're already getting the roots. So the roots come first. And as you can notice, I'm starting to get little bitty buds coming out here. Those are the slips that are gonna turn into the plant that you're gonna put in the dirt and that will grow sweet potatoes. So in case you guys are wanting to do this and you haven't started yet, I did a video a little while back, so go check that out about how to start the sweet potatoes. And uh, I'll keep you updated on the progress, so just stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed. Now I gotta get down to work. I'm expecting my helper down here any second. 
she was up getting uh, finishing up with a little bit of choring and uh, I ran down here without my water so I know she was gonna bring me my water and then we're gonna try to get done what we can today on this beautiful sunny day all right This is a handy dandy. I'm gonna do a review about this. Uh, this is the Milwaukee, right? It's the 12 volt. I didn't get the 18 because I don't use it that much. So I got the 12 volt uh, and I used the three amp hour battery on it. And uh, that's what you guys, some of you guys are asking for a little bit of a close up. And there it is, okay? I just got this for myself because you guys were bugging me about it. And uh, it's actually turned out to be a humdinger. <laughs> and here comes the Wawa. <laughs> And the best helper ever. The best helper ever. Right. You know you got that right. How'd you come up with that? Because I am the best. <laughs> isn't that right? It's a nice day, isn't it? <laughs> oh gosh, it's beautiful. After we've been tormented for weeks. Yeah. The bees are even out today. Yeah, I gotta go check on them. So stay tuned for videos coming up. If you guys haven't subscribed, make sure you do. We live the homestead life around here. We live off grid with no public utilities. Uh, we do live 100% off rainwater, grow most of our own food, and we're down here on the back side of our property because we're uh, building a log cabin for our mom and moving her up from the city. So if you guys like that kind of stuff or you're just curious how log kit goes together, you can hit the subscribe button and make sure you show up for all of our videos. And you can hang out with us. Yeah, and you never know, you might get a sweet potato update and you you know we're not going to do a whole video about the update. So you guys got to hit every single video even if you're like, well, I don't want to watch that one because we could give you an update on something that you've been uh, interested in. <laughs> yeah, we have little nuggets all over the place. Yeah, nugget me in some of that water. Here's some water. You guys got to stay hydrated. You know, one of the problems with most of Americans and most people all around the world is chronic dehydration. And that's true over the you know years, your 20 or 30 or 40 or 50, a lot of health problems can be alleviated by just drinking water. So mm. start your day with a big glass of water. If that's one thing you want to try and you don't want to start doing different things, that's probably one of the best things you guys could do. See, all that. And you get some free, nice health advice around here. This is great. I love this channel. All right, what are we going to do? Right now, we're going to squirt some glue here. And then you know it. It's the glue and glue screw. Glue and screw it. This is probably Stacy's last level. She'll be able to help out <laughs> if, if we're working from the deck here, okay? Because you have to lift this thing up, and no kidding, it's it's you know pushing 200 pounds. Some of them might be a little bit more heavy, but it's it's pretty good. So for her to lift this up here, this is it. This is our last row. <laughs> here we go. So get all you can of Stacy on the log home, Bill, because this will be the last row. <laughs> all right. So we're gonna take it nice and easy, and we're gonna lift it up, and then we're gonna kind of come this way and set it down. Okay. Yep. And if you have any struggle at all, just kind of hold it where you feel comfortable. And then I'll hike my end up and come in. That's probably what's going to happen. All right. We're, we're, here, we're here for each other. Gotcha. All right. It's not too bad. Good job. Push it to you. Stand by. It's going to stick. It's all right. It won't stick. Can you lift it up at all? How high? Just a little. More? All right. Down. Nice. That little foam kind of came out, so I was making sure it didn't fold over and I pushed it back down. All right, good job. All right. Good job. Good girl. All right, can you yank it down this way? That's all right. Do I have to pick it up? No. Just have to scoot it. Now, if you guys also remember, if you've been here for the last couple of times, we've done this side. We've, we're having to work with this side a little bit just to get it into plumb. Okay. So what we have to do is just kind of keep an eye on it. And I have a larger a level that even is taller and we'll be able to walk up the wall a lot better. The larger distance you can measure your wall, the more accurate it'll be. The, problem I had was when we started off, I started off using the square and I used it for the first row and then I used it for the next row. So 
I was keeping the rows right, but after you do a couple rows, you're going to start drifting because you're only going off these two. So I drifted a little bit and we're pulling it back out now, back in this way. And so that's what happened. You guys might have saw that on the last video. So we can correct the mistakes. That's one thing about this uh, log home kit too, is it's kind of forgiving. So this actually looks pretty good. And on the next row, we'll be dead on the money. Yeah. And then as you screw down the, the log here, you're going to have to stay conscious. So that's what happens too. You're not paying attention and you just start screwing those bolts down. And then you're setting this in the wrong spot. So you screw one, kind of check it, hit another one. You'll see, we're going to show you. And then third, fourth, and fifth. By the time you get to the third or fourth one, it won't matter because it's really not going anywhere. Like this, you can tell is a little out. So that's a lot better. And then it moved in down there. So what we're going to have to do is start here and then pull on this. And then while I'm pulling on that, she'll have to screw up to it and then we'll keep it in line. And how's Storm and Norman? Oh, he's just hungry as ever. He is too. He's getting tall though. He's got He's got really long legs. But he's not caught up to no lanky Larry. He's Larry. He's big. He's almost as big as Norman. Is he really? And he's younger. Yeah. All right. You gotta grab your uh, tool there. Get yourself some power. Lined up here. You're about the best looking drill girl I've seen around town, girl. All right. Ready? I might need a like a little stool so I could get above it. I might oh, have to do that. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, like, can I step on one of these? Okay. She's kind of short, so she's got to compromise for the shortness here. <laughs> You need something longer than that? Well, I well I could do one. Well, I could just move it. Just go ahead. I mean, I'm just saying. Can you balance on that? Okay. She used to be a gymnast, so. Yes, my specialty was the balance beam. Yeah, but we'll see though. It's been a while. Oh my gosh! Don't fall. <laughs> that's the unstable side. That's the stable side. Yeah, I got it, Pat. I think that's okay. All right. Do you need any work? Okay. I got one? Hold on. Yeah, I like it right there. Okay, go ahead. Get some! Nice and easy and stay on top. Nice and straight. Turn it a little bit. There you go. Wait, wait. Gotta go the right way. Oh, yeah. Alright, so easy does it. Stay on it. Woo! Stay straight on it. Stay straight on it. Good job. Don't let up. Keep going. Don't let up. Don't let up. Don't let up. Let up. <laughs> All right, you ready? Let's work your way on down the line. Bring me that. Hand me that level there. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Good. Hold on. Don't try this at home. All right. Go! Why do I keep doing that? Come on now. Ah, uh, keep going. Gotta hold this thing over. Don't want to lose an inch. Stay straight on it. I can see it already. Come on. On it. There you go. Yeah. One more. I don't think it's going anymore, really. Ah! Ah! All right, 
Good job. Hold on. I gotta pull it over. Man, this wears you out. Alright. Ready? Get fired. I know, they yeah, do. Alright. Get on the side and pull it. Give it all you got. Pull it. Oh, just stay on it. You can't jerk it. You gotta just stay on it. Pull all you got. Lean into it. Lean into it. Lean into it. You got it. Ah. <laughs> nice. Uh oh, it's, I don't know if you guys have not been around here for a while. I wear my black hat during the winter time because it's a beaver hat they call it, and uh, it's a felt hat. It stays real warm for me. And then as the temperature graduates a little warmer, I'll switch into a straw hat. So I'm sitting here sweating. Might be getting close. So if you guys all of a sudden in video start seeing a straw hat. You know, the temperatures have stayed warm enough, you know, where I can switch over and not have a cold head. <laughs> all right. All right. I don't think that's too bad at all. Now, one question that you guys keep asking over and over and over is A, <clears throat> how come there's no foam going in between each log, right? You guys keep asking that question. You don't need to have any foam in between the log. This channel right here, okay, is just made to ride this track. And it's just to keep these uh, logs as they cure, you know, and shrink, okay? And then they'll swell and shrink over the seasons, right? Like at our house, um, you know, the wood swells and shrinks. You can know uh, when the wood stove is on, it really dries out the wood. So you can definitely see the wood is moving. It's very you know with the nature and everything it's just moving with everything going on and uh, <clears throat> so you don't put anything in here it's just a guide but what we're doing is we're putting the glue on the the end rails okay and then when you set this on there that creates a bond so there's no air or anything that's going to get through there that's one of the reasons why you're putting the glue down and then as you can see you know we're screwing down each I mean, I think it's every foot there's a screw going in. So that really bonds everything down and pushes it down on top of each other, okay? So what I have to do here at the ends uh, is chisel out a little bit of this track so this uh, log here can move over the top of it and extend out. These joints here, these ends are called button pass. So this one will go over the top of this log all the way out and then the next log will dead end right here and then the next log will go over the top, pass over the top, so it's called a button pass. So right now I'm gonna chisel out this end right here, and some people I think were asking why we're not doing anything here. I'm not sure if you're asking if we're doing anything here, or if you're asking what we're gonna do at the ends of the logs, okay? You guys have to remember that this is all naked wood right here, so as soon as we get this whole thing up, then I'll be out here painstakingly staining this whole thing um, and making sure to preserve this wood. Now, you really don't have to stain it if you don't want to. Um, it'll turn a gray color over time, and some people like that. Uh, there's many log homes around us in the Midwest. We're in Missouri, and there's a lot of log homes that, you know, no one's maintained them over a couple hundred years or whatever, and they've just grayed out, and that looks cool too. And I believe the Gastineau log homes, uh, the folks that we're working with, you know, my mom got this kit from, uh, they actually have like a stone washed uh, kind of tone. Um, I think it's actually a stain that they put on there to make it look like it's the old age to the log. So, all right. <clears throat> 
I was just kind of figuring that out with you guys and, and going over that with you because I try to read your questions and answer them as we're going along. So, like I said, right now, we are just going to uh, cut this out and keep on trucking. I think with Stacy down here, we might be able to get a little bit done. But pretty soon, she's going to have to go feed Storm and Norman. Isn't that right, honey? And you see that knot right there? That's nice. See how those fibers just come up on top of that? That changes the whole structure of that log, these knots do. I love it. Makes it a little tougher to get through as well. The ground's drying up pretty good outside too. I like that. that knot. This is holding on. This forms a stronger bond there where that knot is. It's crazy. Ah, we're getting somewhere on it, isn't it? dear life got a little knot there was a little bit booger so what we're doing right now is I'm gonna I'm kind of cheating okay I'll just tell you <laughs> what I'm supposed to be doing is routering out the end of this log and then routering out the side of this log to make that channel for the foam to go in okay but Jerry was up here not Gary but Jerry and after we did that for a while we decided that this drill accomplish the same thing basically a lot faster and uh, so that's what we did we just kind of switched with that see so right now I have to put this drill on here and then uh, I'll drill out this uh, hole here and then we'll put the foam in there we have to put the foam in there <clears throat> if you notice that's where the crack is right on the logs where they meet all these logs meet together somewhere so where that seam is, is you're putting those foams in between there to stop the air and the light from coming through, okay? So you have to do that everywhere the logs butt up. little hole all situated here custom cut a piece of foam <laughs> you know there's a custom log house here sometimes I just have to take off these corners just a little bit to get them in that hole but it all works good you know that saying you can't put a, what is this, a square peg, can't in, put a a square peg in a <laughs> oval hole yeah well, that sun is really turning on. You guys don't get spring favor and get out here and get too much sun right off the bat. Get all burned up. That's not good for your skin. Yeah, you only a little bit at a time. You got to work up to it. Because it feels good, though. You do want to stay out here longer, but you'll burn right up. Some guys like the uh, like tool belts and some guys don't. I actually enjoy them. I like having my tools right on me. Quick access. Save time too. Yeah. You don't have to keep going and getting stuff. Alright. And then the next log will ride down on top of this and keep it in there too. So it'll puff back up because you know they're kind of springy. Like peekaboo. Good job. And 
And down here on the corner, we like to squirt, you know, all around where that log is going to make a connection there. And then right down that front rib. You don't need to, but I always squirt a little over the foam. And then I laid a mark down here so I knew how much to go. And I think one tube pretty much will fill up a nine foot log. Almost. <laughs> Can you do it? All right? Yeah. Now push it towards me. All the way to your mark. Come on! Okay, pull it, push it back. No worries. Hey, we are ready to roll, ready to move, ready to shake. I'll need another tube, tube girl. Tube girl. Okay. Tube girl. I know you make the big time when you have a tube girl. <laughs> it's like, what is it? The price is right. Boy, that really speeds it up. Thank you, tube girl. You're welcome. All right, you ready, strong girl? <laughs> nice form, nice form. All right, you ready? Yeah. Oh, stop. <laughs> Butter down. Whoa. Sorry about that. Why'd you do that? <laughs> we missed a little spot here. Quality control. All right. Just putting you to the test. You ready with your deadlift? You need to push it down so I don't get lift up as so high. You want to switch ends? No, because it went down. Like I, it Let's switch ends. Oh. You ready? That way you get a head start. Is that good? Sure. Ready? Are you going to pick up that way? Oh, I wonder if I should try that way. Whatever you want to do. Just keep it right there. Don't move. Don't move. Go to the other end. Grab that handle. We ready? Just make sure it doesn't move. Nice. All right. Towards me. Nice. All right. You are really doing good today. <laughs> all right. So all we got to do now is. Well, we don't have to glue it. We have to screw it, right? All right. And level. then we have to level it. Yeah, take a level. All right. Put her to the test. Got her? Stay up on her now. The real rosy riveter right there. Good job. Well, that's it for today's video. We just wanted to catch you guys up on some of the Homestead Live. Check in with Storm and Norman. Yes, he's quite the character. And Linky Larry. He's really doing good, too. Yeah, he's going to be a really good ram. Yeah, so Larry. if you guys are raising Katahdin sheep or you thought about it, if you wanted to get a really good ram, uh, email us. Because when we have the really good ones, uh, we like to get those off to people that are having a, a flock and getting going on their stuff. And, and that way... Uh, you know, you can have a really good bloodline. Uh, but otherwise, ultimately, he has to, you know, he meets one fate one way or the other, so. Yeah, but, but Larry, he's gonna be, he's gonna be, he's gonna be, and he looks just like Rambo. I mean, I just saw him out there, cause he's still little. He's standing there proud with his little hooves out like that and his head up and he looked just like Rambo. And he, he is gonna, and he's really muscular. He looks great, so he's gonna be awesome. 
So uh, how do you think you did today on your uh, helping out at the log cabin build? I was fine. You did fine. Oh, okay. You're doing pretty yeah. good lifting up those logs. Everyone's pretty impressed. So, no, I, 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 I can do it. She can do it. I don't know. When it gets a little higher, I'll have to have a stepping stool or no, something. No, that's it. I don't think... I don't think you'll be able to. <laughs> well, you guys stay tuned because as we progress up this wall, you know, there's 15 rows. We're on row six. Uh, you're going to see how we actually lift these up and put them into place. So stay tuned. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, it's time to feed uh, Storm and Norman. And I'm going to go up and work on your cookbooks and your chocolate tea. Now, if you ordered a cookbook or chocolate tea and you haven't gotten your cookbook yet, we're having a lot of problems with folks and their addresses. Okay, you guys are confusing your zip codes and your... Uh, putting in it's highway 62 you're putting in highway 61 just a lot of little things like that even uh, something as simple as st. Louis if you put ST period it throws it out of whack on the uh, computer program I actually switched programs now so we can alleviate that it has an address verifier if you will um, so if you haven't gotten your cookbook you ordered it if you're wondering what's up send us an email uh, send it with your name and your uh, address on there and in the subject line put please check my address and then that way I can go through those emails go to the computer properly tag them and get them out to you and if you have sent an email saying that you haven't received it because I've asked this before and you received it as a courtesy please send us an email and then that way I'll know not to waste my time going to see if you got your book or not all right all right, so that's where I'm going right now, too. So it's, the day's kind of moving right along. So we have lots of jobs here. <laughs> almost time for dinner. Yeah, you guys are killing me with this cookbook stuff. We love it, though, and Stacy worked really hard on it, and we appreciate everyone uh, who is supporting her work on that. We have plenty of cookbooks if you guys want to get one. All you have to do is hit... Off Grid with Doug and Stacy .com. <laughs> See you guys on the next video. Bye. I've been thinking I might up and leave the city. I've been praying on some simple Midwest living homestead instead of my old nine to five with a suit and tie. Going off grid with Doug and Stacy. Going off grid with Doug and Stacy.